Welcome to the Tech One Two podcast. I'm your host, John Campus, CEO of Empist. I also have with me in the studio today, Andrew Beauchantin, COO of Empist. We're really excited about the topic today, how to find the right MSP. So Andrew, let's get started. Sounds what, great, John. What, what exactly is an MSP? Well, an MSP stands for a managed service provider. That can mean a lot of things to a lot of different companies. Um, for most of the companies that we support, uh, because we are an MSP provider, uh, is uh, essentially um, outsourced IT solutions. Those can be as simple as your servers or your network, um, could be your strategy. Um, in many cases, um, a lot of small and medium-sized businesses are looking for uh, an MSP provider that is um, that is able to outsource all of their technology needs and provide strategy. Hmm. So on the MSP front, um, that's unlike uh, a break fix or just an um, IT provider, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, an, an MSP is still an IT provider, but uh, the biggest difference between uh, a managed service provider and uh, a company that doesn't provide those services is primarily centered around uh, break fixes. You mentioned, I have a problem. I need somebody to come and fix it. I am looking for implementing a new application or new solution. Mm -hmm. I go out and I look for a provider. Where the advantages gained from having a managed service provider and where we feel it's advantageous um, for all businesses is, um, you know, we we get to understand your environment or managed okay. service provider gets to understand a client's environment and then make strategic recommendations based on their, their technology needs. Perfect. Well, I'm glad we were able to establish that as far as what the MSP is. And before we go into what you really need to look for in finding the right MSP, um, can an MSP be, uh, can you partner with an MSP regardless if you have an internal IT team or not? Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, it's a great question. Actually, one that I was going to mention when we talk about managed service providers, um, a lot of businesses, especially mid-sized businesses, have internal IT staff, and that's not uncommon. Um, however, they, they don't generally have generalists, or if they do have generalists working in their technology team, um, they're likely not specialized in certain areas. So okay. where it, an, a company can adva uh, take advantage of a managed service provider uh, or as an MSP, as we'll refer to quite frequently, is uh, by adding specializations that don't currently exist within their environment. Okay, so big or small, um, internal IT or not, an MSP is something that an organization can benefit from. So Absolutely. So looking for a new MSP, um, I'm in the market, um, a, a business that's in the market for a managed service provider. What are some of the things that, um, that, someone should look for when, when uh, searching and researching and doing due diligence on an MSP? Well, that's a great question. I mean, one of the first things you want to look for, are they established? Um, have they been in business more than maybe just a few years um, or uh, just are a brand new, a startup? Uh, do they have an established reputation in, in the marketplace? So that's very, very important. Um, you know, have they been around for a long time and have they been providing MSP services? Uh, the other thing is, you know, are they truly an MSP? A lot of businesses will uh, position themselves in MSP, market themselves in MSP, but in many cases they f focus on uh, managed print services or something along those lines, and they then feel like they can offer additional services to clients. You really should be looking for an MSP that is, that's built into their DNA, that's what they're focused on. They built an entire technology stack around great tools that support that client. Um, and then, of course, do they understand your business needs? Uh, you know, it's not it's not necessary for an MSP to be specialized in your industry, but do they work with other clients in similar industries? And do they understand overall what your technology needs are and what your business needs are? So mm -hmm. when you're evaluating new MSPs, it's really important that you outline what you're looking for in that partnership and that they have uh, the full breadth of services to be able to support you in those needs. Perfect. So... Um the the um, the maturity of an MSP is important. Yep, uh, looking at how long they've been in business. But let's even take a step back. So I'm a business. Um, I have needs. I know I have technology needs. Uh, you you just mentioned it, uh, which I'd love to dive a little bit deeper on. What are those needs? How does an organization first come to the realization that they have needs that are not being fulfilled um, that would warrant more of a partnership or engaging with a third party? 
That's a great question. Uh, you know, typically most businesses can identify where they have gaps um, in their support. Either they have a an individual team member or somebody that's not even, uh, they didn't even hire to be sort of their IT person, but they kind of grew into that role. Maybe they were hired to, you know, handle their finance, but they were the most technically savvy. Uh, maybe they were brought in to be an office manager and, uh, and they were there to establish uh, or, or became more techni- you know, more technology driven. Mm-hmm. Um, or uh, maybe they did hire somebody internally to handle IT uh, support, but their user base has grown um, and their need to support their systems and their infrastructure has changed significantly, right? So yeah. maybe they had a real need that that particular person is great with user support, but not great with um, supporting their technology. Furthermore, needs around compliance and security mm-hmm. have evolved dramatically. So most businesses, um, if even if they wanted to, can hire, uh, for example, a, a chief security officer or somebody that's going to focus on IT compliance and governance. Sure. And that's become a real challenge for them. So looking for a right MSP that can provide both baseline support for their users, but also support for their infrastructure, as well as security services, is something that would be really important for mm-hmm. a business today. Perfect. I'd like to expand a little bit on that as well. It's um, I think the light bulb light bulb moment for businesses. Um, if sales are down, they have rising costs, and they don't have operational efficiencies. That should be an indication, an indicator that they need to have they need to introduce some sort of change. Because if they've been doing something and they've been operating under a nor, uh, under um, what they consider the status quo, and they're looking at their sales, their sales are down. It's costing more to operate the business. Their rising costs, it, it's probably a good time to engage with a partner to see how they can improve those things. Can I ask you a question? Absolutely. Now? Yeah, so um, you know, I know it, in our business, we're in a, a growth phase. Um, and really identifying, most businesses need to identify, are they in a growth phase? Are they in a stable, you know, stabilization phase? Are they more concerned about the economic constraints that may exist today? Are they economic pressures? But where are they at? Um, and, and for many of uh, the clients that we support, at least, you know, they, they do want to grow their businesses. So uh, how much do you feel that uh, finding the right MSP um, can help a business that's, let, let's say, looking to grow? I mean, I believe it's an important, it's at the cornerstone. I mean, technology should fuel businesses with the technology they need to succeed, which in fact is our, our mission as a company. Right. But, um, you know, by utilizing technology, you can help increase sales, you can improve productivity, you can uh, truly utilize technology to be at that cornerstone and enable your business to grow. So I think it's, a, it's extremely important it's at top of the list. It shouldn't be looked at as an expense. It needs to be looked at as an investment, an investment to the future growth of the business. So it's extremely important in my opinion. And I mean, we, we've seen it with clients that we support today. We've, we've been able to transform businesses to where they're at today. When you can look back at when they first started with Empus to where they are today, you can clearly see where the gap was and um, um, a significant improvement in the way they operate. Just to touch on that, because you, you brought up some great points there, but you know we talk a lot about uh, helping businesses transform their business, right? So providing transform, uh, transformational solutions. Um, you know, what does that mean to a business that's considering evaluating a new MSP? How can the right MSP help transform their business? Well, they can help in many different ways, uh, depending on what the needs of the business are, what maturity the business currently has, the operational maturity of a business. To see where the gaps. I mean, one of the an MSP. When you're par- looking to partner with an MSP, an MSP should be able to help you identify the current state of where you're at, and have discussions with you as far as where you want to be, mm-hmm. um, and why that's that's extremely important of where your vision is as a company, where you want to be in the future. Because then you can operate in the gap. In operating in the gap, you'll see transformational solutions that are being introduced by the correct MSP. Right Now, MSPs are not created equal and businesses are not created equal. You mentioned a couple things about technology stack and why it's important to work with an MSP that has, um, that's mature, that's been around, that has a proven track record. Why? Because you don't want to work with a company that hasn't done it before. Um, the partner that you work with, they should be able to show you that they've done it before so you're not the first person that they're doing it with. And um, with that being said, the technology stack, we're seeing 
today in today's market, we're seeing a lot of small MSPs. Right. And I have no issue with any small MSP. I mean, it's great. But when I, what, what we find within the market and is uh, tainting the market a little bit has been um, an MSP or a break fix person, you know, a sole proprietor will go into a trade show with a credit card, walk out with a set of tools mm-hmm. and now market themselves as an MSP. Right. And businesses don't have the knowledge. You know, the consumer isn't knowledgeable enough to understand the difference between one MSP and another. But an easy indicator is show me what you've done. Mm -hmm. Show me what you've done. And if you can show me um, something that you've done that's very similar to where I want to be, then I want to that customer and business should want to work with them. Sounds great. You know, there's several things that you mentioned that just bring up, just trigger more questions than just even our own conversations in the past. Um, you mentioned it. it is very easy. So the barrier to entry to being an MSP um, is not great, right? Because there's there's best in class uh, tools out there that they can use to support client environments. What is the mature MSP versus somebody who's just purchased these stacks? What is the glaring uh, and major difference and why you would want to explore that as far as the technology stack goes? Well, I would really, um, in a mature MSP, there should be a lot of defined process. Right. I think the superpower of a, of a managed service provider should be their process and mm-hmm. the client experience that they can deliver. So what process does the MSP have around the tools and technologies that they're utilizing to support you are important things to ask them because it isn't just about the technology stack. Mm-hmm. We're, not ro- we're not going over to the neighborhood uh, electronic store and buying a product and right. now installing and saying, now we're ready. As you can imagine, I mean, the the knowledge, the intellectual property that a business is going to have when they build an entire practice around a set of tools and platforms to better support their customers is going to be much different than someone picking something up off the shelf and now uh, trying to operate your business. Absolutely. And what do you say to a client that you know, says, you know, we're a small, smaller business, um, even, if they're, even if they're by most standards maybe mid uh, mid-size, but they feel that they're smaller business, growing business. Hey, we only have 50 employees or we only have 40 employees or what about the business only has 25 employees? Um, you know, maybe I don't need a, an MSP that's highly established or that's much bigger. Maybe they're too big for me. Maybe I'm going to gain more by more attention from a smaller MSP. Why do you think that that might be short-sighted? Uh, well, I think it's what value does the MSP bring to the table? Um, whether you're a large MSP or small MSP, I mean, there's a lot of small MSPs that provide a great service. Right. So I don't want to say anything poorly about or bad about an MSP that is giving the attention and supporting the client bases that they are because there's a big mix of MSPs and the community is quite large as well. Um, I think when you're looking at a business and the business says, well, we're too small, my first question would be why? <laughs> why are you small? Why are you, you know, is that by choice? Is that because you don't have the tools, you don't have the technologies, you don't have the expertise to grow larger? What's limiting them? So again, it's really taking a shift, uh, changing the approach. It's not trying to be reactive to have an expense on their uh, profit, uh, on their P&L of technology. It shouldn't be looked at as an expense. But what if technology can transform the way they're operating? So instead of them being small, if that is not by choice, that's just based on the market conditions and things that they're challenging, what if they can be large and looking at is that more of an investment that they're investing based on business outcomes that they desire versus just reactive support? Guy under a desk plugging in cables, that's not the right MSP. If the MSP is talking to you about uh, just, oh, we're proactive, we're not reactive. Well, guess what? Everybody's going to say that. Sure. Well, we have the best engineers. Well, nobody's going to tell you that my engineer, Bill, is horrible, right? right? Yeah, don't work with Bill. He's the worst guy that you want to work with. <laughs> Everybody's going to tell you they're great. Sure. But again, it's what is the track record? What have they done? And how can they show you that future state of where your business could be based on your desired outcomes? Absolutely. And and I think you brought up a great point. And just to, just to clarify for our viewers, we we do feel that uh, that the marketplace has a lot of great MSPs and oh, yeah, even smaller, absolutely. even smaller MSPs that are really committed to as you mentioned the client experience and giving great value to their their client base. So there's no uh, there's no doubt that there are great MSPs out there. But one of the things that you should absolutely be looking for is can that MSP smaller or larger scale with my business? Mm-hmm. Right? Isn't that one of the things that that most businesses, as you mentioned, especially if they're in growth mode, how do they help? Uh, scale and stay committed to our growth. 
Absolutely. So, you know, at one, one side of it, you say, well, you're too big for us. Right. You know, you're too big. But as you grow, as your company grows, again, unless you're a lifestyle business and you're, you're okay with where you're at and, you know, we're just going to ride, we're just going to ride it out. Mm-hmm. Um, there's still needs and things that you need to do. Sure. But if you're in this growth mode, oftentimes what happens is they'll work with an MSP. It might be a, um, one or two people. Um, again, I, we stated it. I mean, we're, there's a lot of great MSPs that are sure. small out there. Absolutely. But one of the things that we find are businesses will outgrow the MSP and the MSP isn't growing rapidly enough in order to support their needs. Not just the day to day. It's not just about bodies, people and hours. Right. It's about skill set. Things are getting more complex. Companies want to transform their businesses. So if I'm a smaller MSP or an MSP that hasn't invested and continues to invest, which is an important thing to look at sure. when you're looking for an MSP, the investment that the MSP is making that they're putting back into the business so they can continue grow, mm-hmm. growing the skill set, the people, the training, the operational efficiencies, the processes. If they can't answer that question for you, yep. you're likely going to outgrow them and they're going to limit you, stunt your growth as you're growing your business and you'll be forced to look for another managed service provider um, just based on them not fulfilling your needs. Absolutely. I mean, a great question to ask is what is your, you know, to ask an MSP is what is your practice approach on continuous improvement? Yeah. How are you investing in your business to continually improve and what does that, how does that look to a client? Yeah. And show me, don't tell me. Right. Show them, um, you know, when the MSP, when you're um, interviewing potential partnerships, sure. talk to them. Um, show me, show me that you've done this before. Show me what your process looks like. Show me what the onboarding looks like. You know, you don't want to be, for lack of a better way of saying, a guinea pig in their learning process. But you want to be able to have them provide you the documentation. Show me your process for continual improvement. How often are you looking at it? What type of controls do you have in place? These are all important things that an organization needs to look at. Absolutely. Yeah, so, you know, it's, um, let, let's just look at, the um, looking at an MSP as well, mm-hmm. and um, we talked about the technologies or t- their um, let's say their platform, their platform of technology. Sure, but what about how important is it to understand what technologies are supporting as well? Like very specifically, um, is the is the managed service provider embracing cloud technologies? Um, so third party platforms. What what's their familiarity on supporting third party platforms? Maybe it's their CRMs understanding and aligning the MSP with the technology stack that the business has, Mm -hmm. but also with technology stacks that can help solve the problems that they're facing. How important is it to evaluate, you know, the, just the technology, um, the partnerships that the client, that the MSP has, um, the accreditations, you know, are they gold partners with specific, uh, platforms? How important is that? Well, that's, that's extremely important. And I mean, I think we've said it several times, but it it truly is a partnership, right? So when you're evaluating a new MSP, you want to be evaluating it from the vantage point of, will this be the right partner for me today? Mm -hmm. And will this be the right partner to help me grow in the future? And the right partner will help drive that strategy and drive that growth because most businesses, quite frankly, are looking for an MSP that isn't as we like to joke around about Captain Obvious, right? Isn't just telling me the things that I already know or I can surmise or I think should be there, but what are the things that I don't know? What are the hidden landmines? What are the things that are gonna become problems or issues or challenges uh, for me in the future? And how can I turn those challenges into opportunities for continued growth and differentiation in the marketplace? So those are really important. So a yes, obviously understanding what is the technology stack, but the reality is, there are a limited number of, of um, you know, platform tools that most MSPs will have. They may they may differ they may differ a little bit from the type of remote management you know and monitoring tool that an MSP might use. Um, but the reality is that the majority of the tools will be fairly similar. And as you pointed out, there's not a great barrier there. So what you really look for in an MSP is what is their extension to the partnerships that they have with various manufacturers, with various vendors, and with various tools that many businesses are already utilizing currently. For example, um, most businesses are using Office 365 or Microsoft 365. What does this MSP have in terms of partnership level with Microsoft, and how can they 
take advantage of that partnership to provide greater depth and greater uh, extension of support when needed and or solutions uh, when needed with that partnership? Uh, do they have the highest level partnership with, in this case, Microsoft? Um, if we are having an issue because we, are, we do run on this platform that is important for our business, what if something happens? How are they able to leverage the partnership that they have with Microsoft, that MSB has with Microsoft, to provide better support and quicker remediation when there are issues? Um, so part of it is support related. Obviously, um, a big part of what you're going to be evaluating in an MSP is um, is the level of uh, speed by which we mm -hmm. can provide support and that great customer experience and client experience. But the reality is what most businesses are truly looking for, at least most stakeholders within businesses are looking for, is how can you drive solutions and how can you leverage those partnerships to deliver recommendations and options to us to help us grow our business? Fantastic. I mean... So important, um, and it's a great segue into um, just the options. And let's talk a little bit about holistic planning and st strategy. Sure. Um, when looking for a new MSP, um, what should um, what should a business look for in an MSP when it comes to strategy and how they're driving strategy and solutions for their business? That is a great question. Um, I think you're going to find that there are going to be, you know, we love our acronyms in, in technology in general, but I think you're going to find most MSPs will have what they classify as a, a VCIO or virtual CIO. Mm -hmm. um, that's just a common title that uh, is commonplace in the industry. So almost every business you talk to is going to say, well, we drive strategy by providing you with a virtual CIO, chief information officer, that's going to guide your strategy. And many businesses, um, especially smaller and smaller medium enterprises, don't even have a, a CIO on staff. So that's very attractive to them and should be something that you're looking for um, in a practice that you're evaluating. Do they have a VCIO? I would say right out of the gates, if they don't have somebody dedicated to strategy on your account, that's that's a, that's a red flag. Um, but most businesses, I think you'll find small and large uh, MSPs will have what they call a VCIO. You have to be a bit more discerning. What does that type of strategy be delivered to us look like? Uh, first off, is it a team-based approach or is it one individual that's going to manage my entire account? There's very attractive elements of having one person, a single throat to throat. But at the same time, there are some disadvantages because there may be turnover within that MSP. That person may be gone. All strategy may have been driven through that person. So the first thing you want to be looking for is, are they taking a team-based approach? And what does that team-based approach look like? Do I have somebody managing my account on a day-in and day-out basis and managing some of our operational initiatives? Things like, we need new switches. We need new servers. We need to evaluate potential migration to cloud. Those are things that we would consider more transactional. And then do by extension, do I have somebody that's guiding our overarching strategy and providing transformational recommendations and solutions? And then do I have somebody that is there on a day in and day out basis just being an advocate for our organization and, and, and our needs. And you should have a team-based approach. You should be looking for an MSP that has that type of team-based approach because now your reliance on a single individual to drive all strategy, manage all types of um, customer needs and, and concerns, as well as I need to order a new laptop for a new hire, mm -hmm. or I need to, you know, we, we've identified that we needed a, a battery replacement for UPS, or I need a new switch. Can somebody drive that on a regular basis with out having to necessarily make that the focal point on our strategy. Yeah, I mean, having this team-based approach, I mean, we've seen it, and I know our customers have really benefited from that. So <clears throat> just better understanding how the MSP is driving strategy for their business is very important. It's a very important aspect. And, you know, just for, um, you know, I really want to dive into a few other things sure. for, for the audience to make sure that, you know, we're giving them all that information in order to find the right MSP. Um, Can I so, add something real quick though yeah. to that? Because um, even some of the largest MSPs, and you know, we, we've had a great opportunity to to meet and work uh, beside and, and get an, an understanding of how um, different businesses approach it. Even some of the largest MSPs that are out there still have a VCIO that's driving strategy, but that VCIO may be doing everything for them. Account mm -hmm. management, strategy, customer advocacy. And again, that might seem good on the onset, the challenge that it presents is the, the, the version of attention. So really you want to be evaluating that when you're looking at MSP. Do I have multiple individuals supporting my account? Perfect.
Yeah, I mean, and it, it's important because it's a partnership. In a partnership, we see that as a requiring two equal parties sure. uh, committing to that partnership. And we're dealing with people. We talked a lot about the technology, but an important piece of this is the people. Sure. And because we have people working on these technologies, um, not that technology is not prone to this, but there could be failure as well. Yeah. So accountability. I really want to dive into accountability. When you're evaluating an MSP, understanding what the accountability is that they have um, for the partnership within the organization and how they take corrective action is something that's very important. I mean, for, you know, based on experiences, when we look at this, it's what's the continual improvement? We talked about continual improvement. But when there is a failure, what's Which there will be? Yeah. What's the process? What are the controls that are in place to show the maturity level of that organization? Will they take ownership? Will they uh, will they respond accordingly? Will they take corrective action? Will they implement safeguards to mitigate that from occurring in the future? Because you know, as it, with any type of relationship, there's going to be goods and bads mm-hmm. of the relationship. It's not always going to be good with any type of relationship, whether it's personal or business. Yeah. Um, but um, accountability is something that, when you look at it, if you're you know in the evaluating MSPs and they're you can sense that they're not very accountable. Again, they don't have a process in place. You're asking questions and they're not able to respond to you with documentation. This is exactly how we do that. If it's on a whim, if it's just, you know, if they're telling you that, chances are they don't have the things in place. Yep. And they're going to be working at working and putting those things together when they're reactive to situations happening. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, let's and just to extend that, yeah. I mean, you, you, a few quick questions you can ask an MSP to evaluate whether or not, you know, to differentiate is, do you have an incident management process in place? You know, incidents can be anything from we follow, we didn't follow process internally to what we would classify as incidents. There's some type of an interruption to a service uh, and or services and to the team um, you know, and users or departments within your organization. So what is your incident management approach? Does it follow basic, what we would classify as, uh, I tell standards or infrastructure, uh, technology, uh, infrastructure library standards, yeah. um, that are built across the industry, uh, from an IT service delivery management standpoint, do you have a change management process in place? There are going to need to be changes in our environment. The changes could be as small as we're implementing or uh, deploying a new switch. There need to be new configuration. And how is the documentation managed, right? So do you have a documentation management system? Every every MSP will tell you that they do. But mm-hmm. what does that look like? And how does that follow best practice? And then ultimately, when there are identified missteps in your environment, either process wasn't followed, what is your incident response process to address those? Yeah, Those are simple questions. Just, do I have an? Do you have an incident management mm-hmm. process? Can you pr- supply that? Do you have a change management process? How do you document? And what do you do when you when you have mistakes within your processes? All those things are extremely important, um, and it looks like we're running out of time here. Uh, I mean, we, <laughs> I, did, we, did we already we, fly by. Yeah, we, I feel like we, we, go on 10 we, different- we can we can go on this all day. I mean, a couple other things that um, you know a, a business should look for. Um, just understand the maturity of the business. Those things that you just mentioned are extremely important. Compliance is important. Supply chain risk is important. Um, SOC certifications are important. Yep, absolutely. Um, cybersecurity. One. Understand what their framework is, what controls they have in place in order to mitigate any type of risk your organization may face as well, and just how they'll handle overall technology and technology improvement. Um, Andrew, do you have any closing remarks here? I mean, I just want to say that, uh, you know, we've been an MSP. It's been built in our DNA at Empest uh, for uh, 23 years. Um, and really, we, we identified early on in our, our, our life uh, of our, our business that uh, aligning with customer needs was really critical. So when you're evaluating MSPs out there, are they going to continue to make improvements? Are they going to align with you? And just one last question for you, John, though, because you brought it up, the SOC 2 Type two, that's a certification we got this last year. Why is that so important to a business as far as um, a MSP that has that type of security compliance in place as an extension for their business? Uh, just really quick, I, it's it's just that it's going to mitigate any risks that the organization face. Also shows that their their the companies and partners that they work with 
that they have a security posture and controls in place that is mitigating the risk to the organization, which by extension will mitigate the risk to the company's uh, customers and partners that they work with. Right. So it was a very extensive process. Um, but th- we re- that wraps it up for today. I mean, we'll I can't probably believe have, it. we, we got to yeah. have, have a part two. I we might have a part two, part <laughs> three. And um, but it was great having you in the studio today. If you have any questions on finding the right MSP, don't hesitate to reach out to us. So we 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 hope that all the information today will help you find the right partner to help grow your business. Thank you. Thank you.